Glad to welcome you back to the Look Up channel. I am Yuri Matsarsky, one of the local hosts. I have already said that before the war I was a journalist and as a journalist I traveled a lot around the world, mostly in that part of it which is called the Middle East. I dealt with Hamas, Hezbollah and Al-Qaeda and even covered the war against ISIS. And today I will try to find out which of the terrorist organizations is the most dangerous and explain why it is Russia. Movements and organizations that are recognized as terrorist entities usually exist according to their own rules and laws, knowing and observing which journalists can work for quite a long time in the territories controlled by these movements and organizations. These can be rather idiotic rules. For example, Hamas does not let journalists who look like Jews to get inside their territories. At the checkpoint at the entrance to the Gaza Strip from Israel, even a special person stays on duty whose task is to decide whether this or that foreigner looks like a Jew or not. One of the Al-Qaeda affiliated group, which once controlled a small part of Syria, demanded that journalists cut off the labels of the bulletproof vests if they said that the vest was made in Israel. The requirement, to put it mildly, is strange, because the label is inside the vest and it's not visible to others. But the guys from this group forced the bulletproofs to be removed and checked what was written on them inside. In general, the rules could be strange and stupid, but their observance guaranteed a more or less quiet work for journalists, humanitarian aid workers and other foreigners who found themselves in the territories controlled by Hamas or Hezbollah. Everyone, at least occasionally, traveled to worst parts of the world knew. You should not take a bottle of your favorite whiskey with you to Gaza. We will simply break it and the owner of the bottle may not be allowed to enter. And being with the Syrian rebels, it is better not to ask where we get weapons and funding from. For many groups, this was a taboo topic related to the safety of their relatives and friends involved in a complex scheme of smuggling and other illegal businesses. All these written and unwritten laws were passed from one journalist to another, from a TV crew leaving the Middle East to a crew entering where. They were written about on the internet and warned on social networks by residents of territories controlled by organizations that are commonly called terrorists. It is quite easy to find these rules, to observe them if desired to. There were of course exceptions. For example, in the already mentioned Gaza, I was interrogated for several hours in a row by a three members of Hamas after they found on my Facebook page a photo from the Israeli site of the Erez border crossing which leads to the Gaza Strip. On the one hand, they perfectly understood that Erez could not be avoided by anyone who goes to the Gaza Strip. But on the other hand, informal rules require special attention for those who post photos from Israel on social networks. But this is rather a rare story caused by my inattention and excessive zeal of specific members of Hamas. Usually Middle East trips pass without these kind of adventures until ISIS came along. These dudes had no rules, no written or unwritten laws for journalists or other foreign non-combatants. In general, ISIS as a whole rested on an exceptional, I would say mind-blowing cruelty with people burned alive, with sex slaves which the terrorists sold or simply gave to each other, with the children of these sex slaves, teenage boys who were driven with rifles against artillery and tanks threatening to kill their mothers in case of disobedience. All the rules by which Hamas, Al-Qaeda and other similar organizations exist are the result of a compromise reached by different groups and factions of these organizations. There are no and could not be any different groups inside ISIS. You either share the idea of super cruelty without any reservations and when you are with us, or you do not share it and when you are a legal 
pray for us. And since there are no different groups and factions, there is no need to invent rules. Everything that the leadership of ISIS considered useful, considered permissible. And ISIS was ruled and still ruled by completely devoid of empathy maniacs who treat people as if they were pixel figures from a video game. Do you know where else you can see a similar picture? Where else does a heartless maniac rule guided by insane misanthropic ideas? Where else is such a maniac the only one entitled to decide what is good and what is not, what is allowed and what is forbidden? This is happening in Russia. This country is downright an upgraded copy of ISIS. There is an insane ideology. In ISIS it was the construction of a world caliphate at any cost. In Russia the restoration of a USSR again at any cost. There is a simple formula for the interaction of power and society. You either obey us unconditionally or you will be declared an enemy with all the ensuing consequences. And there are no rules. Anyone can be killed at any time or put in jail or tortured. Like ISIS, the modern Russian regime has a lot of ardent and sincere admirers. These people seriously believe that Russia is doing good by destroying Ukrainian cities, killing children, women and elderly people, because all of this done in the name of some higher goal, the return of Ukraine under the rule of Moscow. In the same way, the ISIS admirers were sure that the death of the innocent people was just an insignificant episode on the way to the emergence of a caliphate. Russia is far more dangerous than all the terrorist groups in the Middle East, Asia and Africa combined, because unlike ISIS or Al-Qaeda, this terrorist entity is recognized by the United Nations and has the right to veto in the Security Council. Its representatives are invited to the negotiations of G20 and other international associations. And these terrorists have nuclear weapons with which they blackmail the world. And the whole world is at loss and is looking for ways to deal with these terrorists. The whole world except Ukraine alone which knows exactly what and how to do with terrorists.